one of the and and this is getting more into the topic of randomness in general. I mean, one of the one of the fun things about randomness is you know the more dice that you throw, the the more the the less uh, random your game actually is. Um, you know, there there has been war games where you you have to roll like ten or twenty dice when you're doing an attack. You know, you get all these units and people are like, oh, this is so exciting! I get all these dice and you throw them out. And but the reality is, is that I'm throwing ten or twenty dice is way, way, way more predictable than if I'm just throwing one die or two dice. So so the more dice you put into your system, you're basically taking you're taking luck out of it and you're moving it much closer to the mean result. Okay, yes, and we've talked about that as well. And I think that's an important point of clarification because people have been kind of back and forth on that as well. Because if you just say something direct, like the more dice you add, the more you remove randomness, that may not be true because it is important to note how you add those dice. And that's and what I'm saying here is, for an example, let's say that you're on a, on a roll of a one of a d20, you're going to fail. Yeah. Uh, so, and you got you got to walk across this tightrope, and so the game master gives you the roll of a twenty to walk across it. Otherwise, you fall off. Okay. Well, that's a five percent chance you're going to fall off. It doesn't help you to say, "Oh, well, then that seems rather random." Here, you need to make twenty rolls of that die in order to successfully cross that, because you've just increased the probability that you're going to roll a one on any of those twenty rolls. <laughs> Well, but and, that's and not... actually at a certain chance, in a certain <laughs> respect, you have actually decreased randomness because you've actually increased the certainty yes. that you're going to roll a one someplace <laughs> and fall off. Yeah, you've made so you've made, it, you've made it pretty sure that you are are probably going to fail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's yeah, games like Warhammer, uh, where you're rolling these fistfuls of dice, right? Because I want to be clear that like if you're if you're um, in a war game where you've got these fistful of dice games and you're going to do a, an infantry charge on this fixed position and you know your type of infantry and what they're armed with and then you've got to go uphill and they're dug in and you've got no their equipment and you're going to roll a whole bunch of dice to resolve that attack. We can start to predict the result of that attack. Yes. But it doesn't follow. That, that, that's not the same thing as saying we just set up a very complicated, we're about to play a very complicated war game of the Battle of Borodino and we're all set up. And we're going to roll thousands of dice, you know, before this is over. That allows us to predict what's going to happen here at the Battle of Bordino. Right. Well, plus yeah. not every die roll. I mean, in that case, yeah, it's it's it gets interesting too because you 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 not every die roll has the same complexity. It has the same importance, right? There yes, maybe certain right. attacks are important and or whatever. So, I mean, a very famous example of that is there was. Um, so the game advanced Third Reich, uh, which was a simulation of World War II in Europe, unsurprisingly. Um, that's that's a really complex war game from the uh, 70s and 80s from Avalon Hill. Um, if you wanted to uh, attack London if, as the Germans, if you wanted to to invade and, and London, most of the time you had to do a one-to-one -one attack on London. Uh, and it came down to, I, I forget what the, or maybe a two to one, whatever the precise numbers were. Basically, if you rolled like a, a six, you lost the battle. Um, and so, you know, there was, there was a lot of, um, a, a ton of die rolls in that game. But it, if that was the strategy that you chose, the entire fate of the game came to, down basically that, that one die roll. If, if the attack completely failed, then you know, that was it. You were, the, it was game over. So the, the, here was one incredibly important die roll that was just a D six. That was just, you know, that was just dropped. So even though there's, yeah, there's, you know, 200, 300 die rolls across the whole game, most of them are a very, you know, comparatively much lower significance. Whereas this is like, you've invested all of your resources into this one single battle, which can be right. exciting, but it can also be unsatisfying in a game that's that long when you're playing a four or five hour game to have it just, you know, come down to, to that, on. to that one thing can, can yeah. be dissatisfied. The, uh, yeah. And I, I was thinking about that. I think I wrote about that or talked about that in the context of a Dungeons and Dragons character, because it's like, yeah, you can say, well, over the whole, whole course of your career as your character, you're going to roll tons of D twenties mm -hmm. and you can say that, okay, so that means you've got an average of 10.5. But when you try to cross the tightrope, 
it's still a five percent chance. It doesn't matter that you know that all you know the average of all four hundred rolls before that was ten point five. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so so context is is important. But you know, in general, in one action, if you're making your players roll a lot of dice to do resolve one thing, it's going to be much more predictable. That right, that increases right. your predictability, and that's exactly. the, yeah, that's why casinos make money. And one person sitting down at a craps table may or may not make money, but overall, they will make money at the craps table. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and all of that jazz, it really helps a lot. But also, please check out The Cultists, the web series on this channel about modern day DD playing Lovecraftian cultists who just want to worship Cthulhu in a world full of people who just don't understand. Season 1 is on the channel now. But also, please check out my YouTube channel. I have over 150 videos on tabletop games and the fantasy genre. If you've enjoyed this video, you might enjoy many of them as well. I look forward to seeing you for them and many more videos to come.